to Society weekly webinar series, jointly organized by IEEE Kerala section, the Institution of Engineers Kerala State Center, Computer Society of India Trivandrum Chapter, Project Management Institute Kerala Chapter, Internet Society Trivandrum Chapter, Bakka Malavi Foundation Trust Trivandrum, and IEEE Engineering in Medicine and Biology Kerala Chapter. As Helen Keller said, the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. And so heart is an organ that is the most valuable, both in its abstract sense, as well as in its physical sense. So it is very important to keep this particular organ happy, calm, and free of diseases. And so as today's topic says, we must have a heart for our heart. So let's, and because uh, that's what keeps all of us up. So today we have with us Dr. G. Vijay Raghavan DM, who is a world famous cardiologist and a teacher in cardiology and a Padma Shri awardee. And he will be taking us through his webinar on have a heart for your heart answers to the frequently asked questions in cardiology. So before we begin, I would like to remind all of you about the feedback link that we'll be providing during the session. And you can mention the requirement of certificate in the feedback link as well. And the recordings of the session will be sent to those who have registered as well. As well. So as we begin our session today, now I would like to invite Ajina Abdul Karim of EMBS for the welcome address. Can we have you, ma'am? Yeah, hi, Akira. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am, you're audible. You're a very warm good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you all to the 40th talk of Indus Society weekly webinar series. This great venture initiated by Indus Society has been successfully coordinated throughout the past 39 talks and is really good going with enormous speakers. So today is not an exception. Today we are extremely delighted to have with us Patma Shri Dr. G. Vijay Raghavan sir to share with us his insight on have a heart for your heart. On behalf of all the attendees present here with the most honor and privilege, I welcome Dr. Vijay Raghavan sir to the 40th talk of Indus Society weekly webinar series. Welcome you sir. I deem it as my privilege uh, to welcome Dr. Shamla Shashidharan, ma'am, to the evening. Welcome you, ma'am, to the IWWS talk. Thank you. Next, let me welcome Dr. Krishna Kumar, sir, for the project management uh, from the Project Management Institute to Allah chapter. Welcome you, sir, to the Indian Society weekly webinar series talk. I'm very delighted to welcome the chair of Indian Society, Harid Bilal, sir, to the evening. Welcome you, sir. Let me also welcome the wonderful host of the series, Ms. Fida Fatima, to the session. Welcome, Fida. Last but not least, I welcome all the attendees who are awaiting for the session. Welcome you all to the 40th talk of Indus Society Weekly Webinar Series. Thank you. Over to Dr. Shyamala, ma'am, for the speaker introduction. Ma'am, please. Hello, everyone. I deem it an honor and a pleasure to introduce this evening speaker, Dr. G. Vijay Rakhavan, the iconic celebrity cardiologist. You may wonder why me, with my credentials as an English teacher, um, I'm neither his uh, colleague nor student, nor uh, cardiologist, clever or not even a doctor. But um, with your permission, I would like to dwell a bit on this person as a wonderful human being, as has impressed me during my long acquaintance with him ever since he married my niece, Nalini, a strong pillar of support for his personal and professional accomplishments. Here is a man uh, with his feet firmly rooted on terra firma while at the pinnacle of fame globally. Uh, however, first to his professional profile so that I don't uh, fail in my formal duty. His professional profile I'm sure all of you have already read through, even otherwise, he's so famous that I think everybody knows about his uh, great accomplishments. Um, so uh, I'll, I'll just highlight just the most salient and pathbreaking uh, achievements so that I can devote a little time to draw your attention to the admirable human being, which is an integral part of this expert cardiologist. So um, after a brief uh, you know, introduction to his uh, uh, professional achievements, I'll dwell a little on that part of his personality which has attracted us most, uh, maybe not known to many people. His research on 
endomyocardial fibrosis and its path breaking findings is definitely a colorful feather on its cap and the establishment of the first 2d echocardiography laboratory in india yet another he started a full fledged cardiology department in the trivandrum medical college he is the vice chairman and founder director of the kerala institute of medical sciences popularly known as kims and the president of the society for continuing medical education research trivandrum he was honored by the government of india with a prestigious padma shri award now um, let's briefly go through because as i told you you have already read through his professional profile after graduating from trivandrum medical college and obtaining md in general medicine he continued his studies at cmc velour took his doctorate in cardiology and started his career there as associate professor but he moved back to trivandrum and continued his research on endomyocardial fibrosis a common variety of heart disease in kerala in association with the postgraduate medical school and brompton hospital london his research on cerebrodolum poisoning helped to introduce innovative treatment and modalities uh, reported to be still in use as one of the pioneer research workers in doppler uh, echocardiography at the university of california he co-authored the first book on this subject from the usa dr vijay raghavan is a well known teacher in cardiology uh, in india and abroad with help from the who and the government of india he established that heart attack and its risk factors are highly prevalent among the poor in kerala apart from padma shri he has received a number of honorary fellowships from uh, various sources like for example frcp edinburgh frcp london and uh, from the american college of cardiology leave alone the innumerable um, honors have been showered on him from within the country as well the latest one being dr palpu memorial award of uh, this year he is a member of the editorial board of the indian edition of the american heart association journals uh circulation and uh, hypertension and is the chairman of the echo cardiology council of the cardiological society of india a uh, hats off to your academic and professional accomplishments now the this is close to my heart to the admirable person the core human being uh behind this colossal cardiologist a happy go lucky cheerful person scintillating with a fine sense of wit and humor absolutely down to earth and egalitarian without the trappings of a celebrity always ready to help you with a smile on his lips his pleasant disposition which is infectious i feel could be therapeutic too because he seems to be uh, teaching us the valuable lesson for a healthy heart and life live life tension free i think it is in a way therapeutic so also his notorious um, dietary prescriptions half to one idli for breakfast half a cup of rice it goes on probably again a message prevention better than cure maybe although busy with umpteen responsibilities his help is readily available whatever be our problem not necessarily in cardiology for example when my cousin's husband underwent heart surgery um at kim he didn't feel all right because without dr vijay rakhavan around uh, since he was in surgical icu surgical icu and uh, when dr vijay rakhavan heard of this somehow or other he found to a uh, time to visit him almost every day which gave him a lot of comfort and confidence uh, again my own experience there are umpteen experiences just a few when mother superior of all saints was recently admitted at kims seriously ill you know with pneumonia and all that he took the trouble to update me daily about her condition i wonder how he manages time any uh, any number of examples uh, i've already mentioned his wit and humor for his humor i uh, don't treat me like a doormat and he could never like a persian rug and you can't fight a man who keeps like this once in florida at his niece's birthday dance party he readily joined in to kick a leg his delightful sense of humor endeared him to one and all so many examples of uh, such little acts of kindness and of good 
However, life wasn't actually a bed of roses during his early life, losing his mother at the tender age of one. And his father uh, stood by him. Uh, he was a language scholar, uh, well-versed in Sanskrit and uh, all kinds of languages. Uh, and he lost his father to uh, cardiac arrest and, uh, uh, when he was still a postgraduate. Uh, then a voracious reader he is. He has a wide range of interests across literature, history, politics, art, geography, and whatnot, a veritable walking encyclopedia. Hailing from a family of teachers, teaching was a passion for him. And he's also the recipient of the Best Teacher Award. Highly principled in his practice, he even helped the underprivileged patients with money from his own pocket. Mind you, these days, when this is a field which has been commercialized, a lucrative profession, but he was, he did act the other way around. Poor people, he helped with uh, money from his own pocket. Now, the title of his talk today, Have a Heart for a Heart, is really interesting. I should say it's rather intriguing, or puzzling, but meaningful, since most of our chat session queries can be eschewed. Uh, rather than a narration of his journey of uh, intricate research and practice, um, answers to our questions will be of immense use and value. We do look forward to it eagerly, and I'm sure we can expect some fun moments as well, because that's an integral part of uh, him. Thank you. Thank you, Shamla, ma'am. That is indeed a very good description about Vijay Raghavan, sir. Uh, you gave, you, you showed us all aspects of what he is. And thank you so much for that, ma'am. And now, uh, uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, sir, now it's over to you, sir, for the keynote. You can please take over the session. I think, uh... I think I should thank the organizers for inviting me for this meeting of so many dignitaries, so many important personalities. I'm very thankful to you because my job is to bring doctor back to community. I also have to thank Dr. Shamala for her kind words and nice, nice description of some of my jokes. Have a heart for your heart. I've been uh, titling this talk for the last probably 25 years, but the content has changed over a period of last 35 years. See, there's hardly anything in difference between engineers and doctors. Your clients ask you questions you have to answer. Same thing in medicine. We sit with the patients, relatives, patients. They ask questions, but before that, we ask questions, get information from them. But with a Google doctor in the field, we are at a loss. The questioning from patient and relatives spreads over a very vast field. Same thing I know, engineers may also feel. At the end of the talk, you may ask me, did you teach us anything new? Probably not. What I'm talking, I'm going to talk to you is everything common in, in our world. See, only thing is that you can be sure after birth, you know, is death. So during life, please, you have to live well. When you're alive, work hard. Achieve all you want to be. Achieving your, achieving your dreams are the very essence of good life. As long as you remain active mentally, and physically, mentally and physically stressed, 
you can remain young and win over the aging process. This is what Mrs. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Burns told us during the European Congress in London in 2017. Mrs. Burns was the person who found out telomerous length and longevity. This is a structure of the nucleus whose length decreases as patient becomes or subject becomes older and older. She found that the that length doesn't decrease if the person remains physically and mentally active. So as long as you remain active mentally and physically, you can remain active. The commonest death, death of humanity is heart disease, especially heart attack. We are not born with a tendency for heart attack. Heart attack is a lifestyle disease. It occurs due to our own way of life, wrong lifestyle. Hence, to a large extent, remember, it is preventable. And look at the, the, the heart attack risk factors and all that you find. Two points listed, non-modifiable risk factors and modifiable risk factors. The family history of early heart disease, non modified. We cannot change the family history, the parents. The age, aging also, we cannot change, even though I said Elizabeth Burns stressed that it can, we can manipulate to some extent. Race, unfortunately, South Asians appear to have a higher independent risk for heart disease as well. So we are more prone to develop heart attacks. Modifiable risk factors are so many. This is what we have to stress on. High blood cholesterol, high blood pressure, the use of tobacco in any form, diabetes mellitus, obesity, lack of physical activity, metabolic syndrome, mental stress and depression, sleep disorders, atmospheric pollution, alcohol. Numerous things are being listed every day. List is increasing as the days go by. My family has two risk factors. The common ask question they ask. My family has two risk factors. So we are bound to have a heart attack at a younger age. Heart attack is a lifestyle disease. Genetic predisposition is an important factor. But you can always modify your risk factors. One of my very, very close colleagues used to tell me, Vijay, my, all my younger brothers had heart attacks. I have been trying to eat less exercise maximally and try to keep away from heart attack. I don't know how far I will succeed. But this person succeeded to a large extent. He definitely had bad genes. By, by, the, by the age he was 54, he had a heart attack. He withstood it. He had a bypass surgery, but he continued meticulously the right lifestyle. Today, he is 80 years old, remaining active, lecturing in many universities, still a very important medical teacher in a speciality. So remember, right lifestyle can change the genetic proneness for heart attack. Another question that people may say that I am too young to worry about heart attack. But please remember, South Asians have a bad tendency to develop heart attacks. And about 20% of heart attacks in India occur in subjects below 40 years. How you live affects your risk for heart disease. During childhood and adolescence, fat deposits start accumulating in the arteries. Later, lead to clogged arteries. Even the young and middle-aged people can develop heart problems, especially now that obesity, type two diabetes, and other risk factors are becoming more common at a young age. Fat deposition blood tubes start in your childhood, but with exercise, low fat, low cholesterol, and optimal calorie diet, you can prevent fat deposition in blood tubes and maintain your heart healthy and normally functioning for a long time. I know when I'm having a heart attack because I have chest pain. Please remember, not necessarily. Although it's common to have chest pain or discomfort, a heart attack may cause subtle symptoms. This includes shortness of breath, nausea, feeling, lightheadedness, pain or discomfort in one or both arms, 
jaw, neck or back, or even excessive tiredness with sweating. When you suspect that you're having a heart attack, go to a hospital immediately. Learn your risk, heart, risk for, of heart attack today. When you feel that you are having a heart attack, do not rush your doctor. Even if he's a friend, <clears throat> please remember that you have to go to the nearest hospital. Doctor at this clinic or consulting room can do very little and may land in trouble for various litigations. There will be delay in reaching a hospital. If you develop any complication, doctor cannot be of much help and there will be plain. So go to the nearest hospital, which is very important. The commonest cause of chest pain in patients attending the emergency room of the hospital is not heart disease. 40% due to chest heart inflammation, 40% due to tummy upsets, but what you call as gas, there's no gas in the stomach there, 20% due to heart disease. But there are silent heart attacks. When the blood tube supplying blood to your region of heart gets blocked, you get a heart attack. It often presents with chest pain. But in diabetics, the nerves are badly damaged and such pain sensation may not be perceivable. They feel sudden weakness, breathless, or a palpitation and sweating. Or a heart attack may occur during general surgery while you are under anesthetic. Rarely a heart attack may go unnoticed to be detected later during a routine medical examination. In the COVID season, please remember during the extreme body aches and fever and many other systems being affected, a heart attack often goes unnoticed. And this is one of the reasons why the mortality remains high in many countries with, with patients with COVID. Heart disease runs in my family, so there is nothing I can do to prevent it. Although people with a family history of heart disease are at a higher risk, you can take steps to dramatically reduce your risk. Create an action plan to keep your heart healthy by tackling these to-dos. Get active, control cholesterol, eat to maintain your ideal body weight, manage blood pressure, control blood sugar, and smoke tobacco and stop using tobacco in any form. Another question you commonly ask, I don't need to have my cholesterol checked until I'm middle-aged. Wrong. The American Heart Association recommends you start getting your cholesterol checked at the age of 20. It's a good idea to start having a cholesterol test even earlier if your family has a history of heart disease. Children in these families can have high cholesterol levels, <clears throat> putting them at increased risk of developing heart disease. You can help yourself and your family by eating a healthy diet and exercising regularly. Keep your bad cholesterol level below 100. People with heart attacks or people who had a bypass surgery or angioplasty, LDL level has to be brought below 70. And today we feel that LDL below 50 is ideal for people who already had a heart disease. My family has no risk factors, so I could live without restrictions. Wrong. Everyone should have an annual medical examination at least once a year from 40th year. You should keep your blood pressure and blood sugars if found to be high. Optimally controlled by lifestyle changes and drugs is required. If you have more than two risk factors, this annual examination should start by 30 years. Good gene is not a passport to carefree life. I always trust people, the blood examination in families where there are more than two risk factors should start from the school age. Youngsters having high cholesterol have to be separated off. It may be a small number, but they have to have, they have, to have their cholesterol checked especially obese children. You have to have a, a, a cholesterol as well as other risk factors to be double-checked and treated in those subjects. I should avoid exercise after having a heart attack. Absolutely no. It was in 1975, out of our senior colleague, General Hoon of the Indian Army, because of the demand from the officers, decided to do a research on army men who had a heart attack. He decided to select people who volunteer to go through a program by which stepwise they were increased to have their exercise program. The aim was to put them into A plus category so that they could be sent even to modern warfare. 
as soon as possible get moving ordinary days after a heart attack people are put to bed for 6 weeks then allowed to go for graded exercise this short term and short term to some extent that we now allow people to sit up have nearly normal food even on the day of heart attack we make them walk but as long as the blood pressure heart rate heart rate are stable and they are made to walk from day to and ultimately many patients walk about an hour in what three weeks time after heart attack as soon as possible get moving with a plan to approve plan approved for you heart attack survivors who are regularly physically active and make other heart healthy changes live longer than those who don't general horns subjects finally did a treadmill exercise test under under uh, hyper, hyper hyperbaric chamber sorry hyperbaric chamber because they not they will they are certified as a plus category and get promotion people with chronic heart disease typically find that moderate intensity activity is safe and beneficial we recommend at least two and a half hours of moderate intensity exercise activity each week find the help you need by joining a cardiac rehab program or a consult your healthcare provider for advising on developing a physical activity plan tailored to your needs the fitness centers are for people without heart disease general horn ultimately achieved 40% of his subjects with heart attacks to reach a plus category that means they were able to do a treadmill exercise in a hyperbaric chamber so they were fit to go to the mountain for modern warfare they may remember the human body is so well pliable for good training even after a heart attack good exercise means after 30 years or so push up pull up weight bearing a weight uh, weight dumbbells weight lifting they are of very limited use just isometric exercises while walking swimming cycling or playing badminton tennis or similar games for one hour a day before food is adequate for all subjects don't go for exercise program after food annual and weekend holidays are important to de-stress in this modern world government gives you annual holiday please don't cash them use them the the bharat bharat darshan so many things government is giving utilize them go for the bharat darshan with the family and de-stressing is extremely important exercise improves appetite but do not increase your caloric intake maintain optimal body weight and avoid overeating and obesity what is low fat low cholesterol diet avoiding butter ghee dalda coconut oil coconuts and fried food in your daily diet your daily quota of oil that you can use is hardly about 3 to 4 teaspoonfuls a day so please remember every month you buy cooking oil keep a watch on it how much you are buying is it for 3 to 4 teaspoonfuls for the whole every family member or more if it's more cut down it cut down the oil that you buy if the oil is available at home they will use it take more vegetables but not root vegetables root vegetables are pure starch they supply a lot of calories so coconuts and root vegetables especially tapioca i can remember were the staple diet of malayalis but at that era malayali used to walk 10 miles cut wood work in the field and you say spend more than 2 to 3000 calories a day do we do that sitting in, in a easy chair in the evening looking at the television and eating chips is not the type of human being that we expect to take butter ghee dalda coconut oil coconuts and fried food use watermelon papaya and apple pear etc instead of taking grapes oranges pineapple and mangoes which are full of calories cut down on salt rich items like pickles poppers chips dry fish salted nuts and biscuits the an average man needs about roughly about 5 grams of salt a day a low salt or or a moderate salt is very important to keep the blood pressure under control within normal limits 
the average indian south indian diet contains 15 to 20 grams a day especially with all these pickles and puppets and chips please remember this salt intake without our knowledge is the reason why blood pressure incidence is so high in our country tobacco tobacco is harmful to mankind Passive smoking in a household and offices and other members smokes is equally harmful. Tobacco is a risk factor for heart attacks, blood pressure, strokes, as well as diseases of lung and stomach. <clears throat> One of the biggest success stories against heart attack is in USA. They could reduce the incidence of heart attacks by about 30% over a period of 25 years. now it's much more this was achieved by strict control of tobacco use exercise and reducing dietary intake i still remember when i worked in los angeles in 1983 the only room in that hospital where you can smoke was a smoking area of the restaurant thanks to our our justice group the smoking in public places is banned in kerala and that has done a lot of good to the people of kerala a lot of questions are asked about alcohol and heart more than two pecks will increase your heart rate and blood pressure it will increase your bad cholesterol and blood in blood you may lose your inhibitions and focusing power which may land you in embarrassing situations about which you may read read many a time in the letters so please remember alcohol is not a medicine to prevent heart attack but when taken as part of food in small quantities may not harm you this is a controversial statement way back in 19 1990 i think british heart journal wrote an article if a doctor tells you to stop smoking He has all the moral obligation to ask you to have a drink. A very controversial editorial. People objected to it, and they they had to withdraw because they had to accept that alcohol is not a medicine to prevent heart attack. To be taken as part of food in small quantity may not harm you. Unless you take wines, you cannot survive in in the continent. It's extremely difficult. Big time. Often, what you take with alcohol. Are fried snacks, and it can harm you as much as the alcohol. So, what you take with alcohol can be more damaging than the alcohol itself. I don't have any high blood pressure because I have no warning signs. I'm sure there will be warning signs. This is a wrong concept. We pick up a lot of patients who never suspected they have a high blood pressure because. high blood pressure is a silent killer because you don't usually know you have it you never experience symptoms you don't wait for your body to alert you when there is a problem when you go out for the field work when you conduct many camps you pick up a lot of patients lot of subjects with high blood pressure very casually and they always tell you i never knew i had high blood pressure that's why it's called a silent killer The only way to know if you have high blood pressure is to check your blood pressure. Early treatment of high blood pressure is critical because if left untreated, it can cause heart attack, stroke, kidney damage, and other serious health problems. Thirty-five percent of subjects with high blood pressure are below forty years in our country. So everybody above thirty years should have the blood pressure checked occasionally, and above for forty years at least. once every year it's like the blood pressure diabetes please remember diabetics die due to heart attacks and strokes and not due to excessive sugar in the body your diabetic drugs insulin never prevents you from developing a heart attack most of the drugs used for diabetes till recently till about 4 years back never protected the heart and blood tubes only recently we have a few drugs that has come in 
which helps sugar as well as the blood tubes or more the blood tubes than the sugar in diabetic patients. Treating diabetes can help reduce or, or, or delay the development of heart disease. But when the blood sugar levels is on, level is under control, you are still at increased risk of heart disease and stroke. That's because the risk factors that contribute to diabetes also make you more likely to develop heart disease. The genetic factor that gives you diabetes harms not only the, the islands, the lung glands that produce insulin, but also the blood tubes of the body. Blood tubes go into the heart, go into the kidney, go into the brain, go into the legs. All these things are affected. <clears throat> Those overlapping risk factors, namely high blood pressure, overweight and obesity, physical inactivity, and smoking should warn you of your heart attack risk. Many people, when they come to me and uh, find out they have blood pressure or diabetes, will say, I don't want to take any drugs. Because once they start taking drugs, there is no way out. In diseases like high blood pressure, diabetes, filters, you may have to continue medication depending on your blood pressure and blood sugar. There is no escape. There is no escape. At the same time, you can have very strict, meticulous lifestyle changes. Many people avoid taking avoid drugs. Only 10% of patients who have been diagnosed with high blood pressure and 5% of patients who have diabetes can stop medicines by a rigorous lifestyle modification. Others should continue the medication lifelong or feeling healthy and to avoid complications. Please take it from me that if you have blood pressure or, blood pr or diabetes, if drugs are part of food. Take it as a part of food is absolutely essential for maintaining your normal blood pressure as well as your normal blood sugar. Some of the people who walk have aching pain in the muscles, especially the, the muscles behind the, behind the legs and the calf. This pain in my legs must be a sign of aging. Naturally, yes. I'm sure it has nothing to do with my heart. But when you walk, you have severe pain in the legs. Remember, it is similar to a heart attack. The blood tubes go into the heart. If it is blocked, you develop a heart attack. Go into the brain, you develop a stroke. Go into the legs, it will give you what is called a claudication or pain when you walk. It's a sign of peripheral arterial disease. So the leg muscle may not get enough blood supply during exercise. Peripheral arterial disease results from blocked arteries in the legs caused by fat deposition. Same process, same process as heart attack and strokes. People with diabetes, this is more common in people with diabetes. It would occur due to old age. The risk of heart attack or stroke increases fivefold for people with peripheral arterial disease because this could be an early sign in many an individual. And if you have claudication or pain in the legs when you walk, better, 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 better contact your doctor and get examined. <clears throat> Some people come to you, my heart is beating really fast. I must be having a heart attack. It's very common in uh, in younger age group. This is because of low lows or other problems. But some variation in heart rate is normal. Your heart rate speeds up during exercise or when you get excited and slows down when you're sleeping. Most of the time, a change in your heartbeat is nothing to worry about. But sometimes it can be a sign of heart rhythm changes and abnormal regular heart rate. Most fast heart rates are harmless, but some can be dangerous and require treatment. One of the very interesting terminology is holiday heart syndrome. What happens in a holiday? Why, why is the name as holiday heart syndrome? Holiday is because they drink too much. The heart rate increases. It may become irregular. Blood pressure may rise or fall and you develop, you develop sweating and you have to be in the hospital. The heart becoming irregular on alcohol intake is called the holiday heart syndrome. It's not very uncommon. On an average, you may admit one patient every month, actually, especially in Kerala. Because Kerala people 
do not know how to drink. They want to empty the bottle. And holiday hub syndrome is the ultimate, ultimate uh, result. There are precipitating factors. Remember, stressful circumstances do not do precipitate heart attacks. Unfinished house building, unpaid loans, sudden loss of loved ones, continued stress at work. One piece of work I did in Trivandrum Medical College in 1991. And we found we could identify a precipitating factor in about 50 to 60 percent of patients. There was a sudden stress that came in, which they could not withstand. And this precipitated the heart attack. <coughs> de stress. One of the interesting, beautiful scenario I saw was that you got the Institute of Molecular Biology in Jagadhi. When I visited the lab and came out, the scenery around absolutely fascinated me. There's a beautiful garden and trees and whatnot. And Professor Radhagishan tell, told me this is for de stressing the scientist of the institute. De stressing is extremely important for every human being because stress is part of stress is part of human life, especially in modern era, it's more and more. And that's where family holidays, weekends, meditation, yoga, all th these things have a role. All these things have a good role. Researchers found that in patients with high blood pressure, drugs act better with meditation and yoga. Drugs act, drugs act better. We might not be able to, <coughs> able to forgo the drug therapy, but they act better. The drug dosage could be reduced. De-stressing is an important part of today's today's life. There are some patients who come to you with all features of heart attack. You have to you have to ask them about an acute stress event. Acute stress do occur in the heart. May present like a heart attack. But there's an identifiable acute stress. Blood tubes in the heart are normal on angiogram. May develop low blood pressure perhaps may even be fatal. This is because during stress, many hormones are secreted. Some of them do produce spasm or contraction of the blood tubes <clears throat> and contraction of the small and medium vessels of the heart produce the blood supply suddenly and they develop a heart attack like picture. All the blood chem chemistry will be abnormal, abnormal, but angiogram will be normal. Prompt diagnosis and treatment can save the patient who may regain, who may regain normal health afterwards. Heart failure means stopping the beating. Heart suddenly stops beating during cardiac arrest, not in heart failure. Heart failure is radically different. Heart failure. The heart keeps working, but it doesn't pump blood as well as it should. The heart pump is becoming inefficient. This can cause shortness of breath, swelling in the feet, angle, and persistent coughing and wheezing. Please remember, nearly all heart diseases ultimately lead on to heart failure. <clears throat> all diseases may weaken the heart muscle. And in course of time, the heart cannot pump well. There's a remarkable reduction of acute heart attacks in the USA. But there's a steady increase of admission for heart failure over the last 20 years. This is because people are living longer and instead of heart attack, they go into the hospital because of heart failure. Heart attack, they overcome very well, angioplasty, bypass surgery, etc. But heart failure is something that is difficult to treat because very good medical care. During cardiac arrest, heart stops beating and the person loses consciousness. If she stops normal breathing. This is the end of life. Cardiac arrest is the end of life. Cardiac failure is due to weakness of heart muscle. Nearly all heart disease leads on to heart failure. Avoid cardiac failure by early treatment of heart disease. And if it occurs, promptly treat it. <clears throat> cardiac arrest is when the heart stops beating. Death. Avoid cardiac arrest. At the end, let me tell everybody, there's a limit to which man can help 
a patient who is ill. The Greek god of medicine, Asclepius, has said, man cannot cure all those who are ill, for then he will be superior to God. I always want to keep this at the entry of every intensive care unit because expectations of our people are very high when they admit a patient <clears throat> with heart attack or heart failure and dies. Now, a limit to which doctors can help these patients. Man cannot cure all those who are ill, for them he will be superior to God. To every Google doctor, I want to tell this. Google will not tell you this. Google will never tell you this. That's where Google gives you 50% wrong information, 50% correct information. But man cannot cure all those who are ill, or then he'll be superior to God. That Google will never tell you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for patient hearing. I will look at the questions. Thank you, sir. So now, uh, so now we can move on to our question answer session. Um, so yes, uh, there's a question here uh, from uh, Venkatesha Narayanan, sir. What is the impact of hypothyroid condition uh, with heart function? The thyroid is essential for heart function. Thyroid maintains the normal rhythm and uh, contractility of the heart muscle. About 10% of patients with heart, heart, heart attacks do have a low thyroid level. So when the low thyroid level, the cholesterol level goes up. The function of the heart is also inhibited. So it has to be at, uh, attended to by giving thyroxine. High thyroid is just the opposite. High thyroid pumps the heart. The heart starts working fast, beating fast. Sometimes you may find the regularity of the heart. And hence, that also has to be detected early and treated early. Both are treatable diseases. Thank you, sir. Another question from uh, Thayla Anantakrishnan. Where does the family history start so far as diseases are concerned? Is it from the parents or grandparents or great-grandparents? It's basically from the parents. But it may skip generation because the parents may live very well with, 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 with all the restrictions. So the grandchildren should not think that they have they, 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 they have they're not inherited the gene, can skip the generation and come, come from their grandparents to the grandchildren directly. Yes, sir. Um, so she has also asked you if you can uh, narrate any uh, heart ailment, that, a rare case of heart, heart, heart ailment that you've come, come across. But I didn't understand. Uh, he, she's asking whether you can narrate a rare case of any heart heart ailment that uh, you have come across um, there are many in your professional career. <laughs> I have entered medical college 61 years back. So there are numerous scenarios. But really one thing I always remember, one of the famous judges had a heart attack and was in the ICU. I was staying in Kaudia and uh, Evening, I, I got a call that patient is not doing very well. Normally, I go to the go to the hospital by eight o'clock or late in the evening. I thought I have to rush. I rushed and went there and found that his heart has slowed down significantly. He was going at about thirty per minute, and luckily I could save, save the patient, and he lived up to about I think eighty years or so. There are many, many, see, 60 years of medical life. There are so many anecdotes coming into your mind. Yes, sir. that's right. Um, another question from uh, Saurav S. Uh, so how would you recommend an ideal dietary chart? Ideal dietary? Yes, ideal dietary chart. See, the, the whatever you take is should be what you like. Should be what you like. But... It should avoid butter, ghee, dalda, coconut, coconut milk, and coconut oil. People will strongly object to me when I said coconut, coconut milk, and coconut oil because our forefathers were using it in plenty. But as I said, our forefathers 
or cutting wood, walking 10 miles a day, cycling 20 miles a day, and living a life with plenty of physical activity, which we do not do. That's why we do not include coconut, coconut oil and coconut milk in, in, in di diet, which is good for us. <clears throat> Take plenty of vegetables and fruit. <coughs> Very sweet fruits on a regular basis. The amount of starch should be one third of the or one third of the food that you take, and starch means rice, wheat, corn, or even the tubers. All the tubers, eleven yam or yam or any, all the tubers contain pure starch. And remember, they are as bad as the rice and wheat that you take. So the total quantity should be one third of the food that you take. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Another question from uh, Dr. It's louder. Uh, so now am I audible? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yes, sir. There's another question from Dr. Anand Panikya, sir. Uh, sir, um, modern findings presented by doctors like uh, BM Hedge contradict your positions uh, on coconut oil, cholesterol, regular checkup, etc. Uh, he would like you to comment on it. And I'm not here to contradict Dr. Hegde. He has his own opinion and I have my own. My opinion, I'm very happy to say, is backed up by the many heart associations of the world, including American, European, and Indian Cardiac Society of India. Hegde doesn't have that backing. Yes, sir. Uh, another question from uh, Thailand Krishnan. Does wearing high-heeled footwear affect your heart in any way? <laughs> Do you wear high-heeled footwear? <laughs> then only I can answer it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but I don't know whether it's <laughs> See, high-heeled footwear oh. is never physiological. Never physiological. And uh, I... I, I I never, never advise people uh, to use it, get rid of it if you want to avoid backache in old age. Yes, sir. Another question. Um, can echo test detect blocks? During routine checkups, echo test and ECG are taken. Will that suffice to detect blocks? See, there are many clothes in the human body. The blood tubes cannot be imagined, imaged with the echo. Only in the cardiac chambers, you can detect blood clots very easily. The, the blood clots occurring in the blood tubes cannot be detected by echo, except large blood tubes by radiology people will diagnose blood clots. When the large, large blood tubes get blocked, but the type of blood tubes that produce heart attack and stroke cannot be detected by echo. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, there's one more question. I think so that is the last question that we have. Uh, if the, uh, It is by the K. Uh, Surendran. If the total cholesterol levels become less than 100, is it good for the heart? What is the minimum? See, the times have changed. Now we have uh, drugs like Evilokumab, where the cholesterol level can be brought very low. The what is what cholesterol level is needed is still not determined. But it has been proven that cholesterol levels extremely low is not harmful. Low with a, with a, in, a, in a healthy individual. There are various chronic illnesses where the cholesterol level becomes very low, which is not ideal. But in a, <coughs> healthy individuals. See, the harmful cholesterol is called the LDL cholesterol. Earlier, we thought 130 is fine. Then we thought 100 is fine. And now we know that people with heart disease, it has to be below 70. And latest guideline is that it should be kept below 50. The drugs like Ivalokuma will keep the LDL cholesterol level around 25. And we have not found any harmful effects at all. Any harmful effects at all. 
people earlier thought that <clears throat> lower levels may make subjects psychiatrically abnormal that never happened in very large medical clinical trials and that has not been found to be true yes sir uh, thank you sir we we have some more questions that is there so uh, next question from uh, venkatesh narayanan sir what is the weight chart recommended for indians see the weight chart is not different from americans because indians have a shorter height the ideal body weight will remain lower the chart is in relation to the height so when the indians have a low, have a short shorter height the weight weight is naturally lower but if you want to avoid heart attacks and strokes please remain in the lower limit of normal range not to the higher limit lower limit of normal provided yes. you feel fit yes. the most important thing is that by evening when your work is finished <clears throat> you should feel still continue to feel fit and that should be the diet that you take yes sir thank you sir another question sir from nazrulla a uh, please explain in what hcm is uh, and uh, what should be the lifestyle of a patient hcm is a uh, one of the common forms of uh, congenital heart disease or 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 a or a heredo familial disease but common means it occurs uh, one in 1000 live births that's all where the heart muscle thickens inappropriately normally heart muscle thickens when the blood pressure goes up here without the blood pressure going up heart muscle thickens and hence heart can become irregular you can have chest pain due to heart disease you can have fainting episodes and it may not produce any problem at all and this is one of the reasons why many sportsmen have died suddenly in the field which you read about in the lepers one of the things that happens in thick wall is sudden death without any premonition <clears throat> without any warning they find them dying suddenly that's why this many of these sports but people have died with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy and the main treatment is the types of type of uh, thickening that has occurred the treatment is de de depend upon the type of thickening that has occurred where in the heart this has occurred there are many treatment med medical surgical as well as uh, as well as uh, using devices uh yes sir uh there is a uh, there is a person who is raising his hands i had seen it before uh, would you like to unmute and talk sir it's given galaxy a20 uh there you can go ahead with the other questions uh, okay okay sir okay fine uh there's another question from uh, mohammed kasim s uh, the symptoms that we have to care most to safeguard from heart attacks would you like to say some of them sir number one is chest pain but this pain is not a classical pain that you get when you have a, when you have an injury or something the best description i have found in uh, the life magazine which will be published in the 60s <clears throat> this is describing a man who came out of his office and he felt a bulb burning in his chest he went to the railway station the bulb was still burning got in the train the bulb started burning more brightly first in the left side of the chest next in the right side of the chest and he found that he cannot sit down he has to stand this burning in the chest spread down to his shoulders later to his back to his jaws and then he lost consciousness this is one of the severe form of heart attack that has occurred the description i always tell my students is a classical description of a heart attack the pain that occurs is not classical but anybody who gets it many a time will understand this is not the usual pain i have to go to hospital rarely it may be severe sweating 
it may be excessive tiredness, palpitation, and many vague symptoms. The, but remember, the commonest cause of chest pain by which patients come to the emergency room is not heart disease, but due to what's called a gas, the abdomen laps, uh, abdomen upset, tummy upset, and just just wall inflammation. Chest contains so many tissues. Never forget that heart is not the only organ of the chest. Got skin, separatist tissue, bones, joints, so many things. The pain can occur anywhere. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Another question from uh, Venkatesh and Narayanan, sir. There is a thought that statins cause uh, brain uh, impacts. Uh, is it true? Are statins now recommended uh, to uh, reduce cholesterol? Statins are recommended <laughs> to reduce cholesterol. So far, in numerous trials, statins did not produce any significant harm to the brain or to the blood sugar. The only thing that may come in is vague aches and pains without any blood changes. <clears throat> the, about a, a very high level dose of statin, patients who may need a very high dose of statin to control the blood cholesterol, of which about 10% may develop diabetes if they have a genetic predisposition. Other than that, statins have been found to be very safe drug. That's the reason why in countries like Germany and Canada, it is an over-the-counter drug. You don't need a prescription. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. So that's with the question and answer session that we have. Uh, thank you. Uh, so, uh, sir, now as we... Uh, uh, yes, sir, thank you so much, sir, for your uh, time. And thank you for spending a lot of time with the, the, such valuable time with us. So uh, now as we are coming uh, to an end of our event, uh, I would like to now uh, request Dr. Krishna Kumar of PMI Kerala chapter to give the vote of thanks. Uh, can we have you, sir? Thank you, Fita. Um, am I audible now? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yeah. Um, so hi all, good afternoon. I'm uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar from PMI Kerala. A very wonderful session by um, uh, Padma Sri Dr. G. Vijay Raghavan sir uh, on have a heart attack, a heart for your heart. Uh, answer to the frequently asked questions in cardiology. It was so such a wonderful session with a lot of uh, facts and figures and a uh, lot of information. And I, I think uh, it, it is uh, really, we are getting a lot of knowledge through the capsules filled with the humor. I, some of the points which I understood is that, okay, you, you need to have a fit body rather than being fit. And uh, you need to, uh, the doctor, uh, Google may not be always the right answer for you. And uh, they can be only 50% accurate. And it may change according to the context and the, the right person who can actually recommend the right uh, uh, medicine for you is always the doctor, not the Google. So thank you so much, sir, for the wonderful insights. I would like to place on record our sincere thanks to Dr. G. Vijay Raghavan, sir, for delivering this wonderful session. And uh, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. And I would like to place on record on all the seven societies conducting this series of webinars during this uh, COVID situation, because it has been wonderful and we are getting uh, great lessons from great dignitaries across the world. And uh, we are getting a lot of uh, we are getting knowledgeable day by day thank you so much and again um, special gratitude to harindra lal shamala shashidharan Shida, fatima for coordinating this session for wonderfully well and finally all of you who have joined from different parts of the world for acquiring a great knowledge from the great person uh, like uh, patma shri dr g vijay raghavan sir Thank you once again, sir. Thank you for the bit. Thank you, uh, Krishna Kumar, sir. Uh, and uh, Dr. Vijay Raghavan, sir, thank you so much, much for uh, sparing time with us. And uh, we really feel very interested to talk to you. Uh, even if uh, the thing comes on one way and we, uh, we do not interact much, the people do not interact much, we still feel really good to hear to you. And uh, it, is very, it was very interesting, sir. Thank you so much. 
And uh, so with this, uh, we have come to the end of the 40th session of uh, the Inter-Society Weekly Webinar Series jointly organized by IEEE Kerala Section, the Institution of Engineers, Kerala State Center, Computer Society of India, Trivandrum Chapter, Project Management Institute, Kerala Chapter, Internet Society. Society Trivandrum Chapter, Bakamalvi Foundation Trust Trivandrum, Trivandrum and IEEE Engineering and Medicine and Biology Kerala Chapter. The next session that we have is our 41st talk of the Inter Society Weekly Webinar Series. It is on modeling a self organization by uh, Harikutin K. He's a consultant, project management, uh, 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 honorary secretary of Project Management Institute Kerala Chapter. Uh, and uh, it is yet another session that we are waiting for. And it is on the 20th of January, 2021, and uh, on that's on Wednesday from 6 to 7 p.m. So, so hope we can meet all of you again on our 41st talk as well. So uh, hereby I declare that our meeting is closed. Thank you and have a nice day.